you're probably all familiar with this puzzle here. So we've got a picture distributed on 15 tiles. And we've got an empty square and with this empty square you can push those tiles around in a box. And if you're just persistent enough, what you'll be able to do is uh, reconstruct the picture, like so. This puzzle here is actually what I'm going to talk about today, which sounds a bit boring, but I mean, obviously the title promises a lot more, right? We're promising a Rubik's square and something to do with the 19th century and something that's unsolvable, but we're going to solve it anyway. So, okay. Um, it's not just clickbait. <laughs> I can justify every single one of those points. And so let's just go for it. So 19th century. Let's just turn this into its 19th century counterpart. So made from wood and instead of the picture we've got uh, the tiles numbered from 1 to 15 in natural order. Now like uh, put it next to a Rubik's Cube because we're heading for something Rubik's. Um, so compare this to the Rubik's Cube. Well, how do you play this? Well, these days you just shuffle it up, give it to somebody and say solve it, restore it. Same thing with the Rubik's Cube. We just shuffle it up, give it to somebody, solve it. So very similar. Uh, other similarities. Um, well, the Rubik's Cube caused a huge, huge puzzle craze in 1980. Um, basically, the world turned into a big, huge Rubik's Cube at the time. I was around, it was amazing. Now, that wasn't the first puzzle craze of this type. Funnily enough, exactly 100 years earlier, in 1880, this guy here caused the first real huge you know, mechanical puzzle, puzzle craze. What was so difficult about this one here? Uh, well, let's have a look at a newspaper from the time. So here, center stage, is the 15 puzzle, that's what it's called. And if we zoom in, that was the 3rd of March, 1880. If you have a close look, what's shown here is actually a little bit different from what I showed you before. Uh, the 14 and the 15 are swapped over. And it's really this, swap here that caused the craze. So what you were given is a box with the tiles like this and people ask you, solve it. That's supposed to be legal moves, okay? Um, and people just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. As hard as they tried, they couldn't do it. Well, some people um, claimed they had done it, but they'd never been able to produce any, you know, written up solutions that other people could follow and verify their solutions. Um, now people started offering prizes. So the first prize that was offered was a set of false teeth um, worth $25. That was done by a dentist, Dr. Charles Pervey from Rochester in, in Massachusetts. Later on, he even upped the price to, well, he added another $100 that he could win. Okay, let's just go back to um, Rubik's Cube and this puzzle. Now they actually look a little bit different, right? They look a little bit different. So what we're given here is... Well, the puzzle not in its solved configuration, right? So that it was just given from somewhere, and you're supposed to solve it now. Now, Carly, oh, my, I've got my, my son Carly here again, who's going to assist me. So, Carly, you, you see this one here, you see this one here. If we wanted to fix up the cube so that it looks pretty much like that one here, what would we do? We have to change it just like 14 and 15, take the pieces out and switch it. Exactly. So what we have to do is we have to take like two pieces, the same kind, like those two edge pieces, swap them like so, and now give that to somebody like Carl and ask them to solve it. And actually, uh, a lot of you watching here uh, will know this. If you give something like this to a friend, they won't be happy because they will not be able to solve it. And you might also suspect at this point, well, this one can't probably solve, and you're right. This puzzle cannot be solved. Of course, you know, people at the time, that was the first time they, they encountered a puzzle like this. They didn't, didn't, didn't know this, right? So they you know, just kept trying. So for six months, that puzzle craze went on all around the world. Okay, so we've got our Rubik's Square. I think, you know, um, I can call it a Rubik's Square, right? And obviously 19th century is justified. Unsolvable, but I just claimed it. What I really want to do now is actually prove it to you. So basically what we did in 1880, run a huge experiment, right? Like millions of people trying to find a solution. Nobody could do it. Now is that a proof? Not really, not really. There's gazillions of configurations of this puzzle here. And there's gazillions of ways of kind of going through this 
um, configurations to try and find a solution. So just because a couple of million people tried this doesn't mean it can't be done. Right? So what I want to show you now is just kind of three very simple kind of observations. And those observations are going to say once and for all, this can't be done. So very, something very powerful. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's why I do mathematics, because I, I'm really interested in this sort of stuff. Right? Okay, so let's just go for it. Kali, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, have a look at this white square, okay? Yeah. I'm going to manipulate the pieces in the box, and you're just going to watch the white squares and, you know, see, tell me what you see. Okay, let's go. Um, so push them around. What does the white square do? It just kind of goes for a walk in this four times four grid. All right, that's the first thing to kind of note down. Second one is, it actually makes sense to consider that blank square here as, a, as an additional 16th tile, okay? So let's just see what happens when we actually make a move here, okay? So we make a move, what happens? Well, basically two tiles swap places, right? So the empty tile and that tile here swap places. So a move corresponds to a swap, a special kind of swap. All right, so these two things we keep in mind. So basically when we're solving or trying to solve this puzzle, we're doing this with using special swaps of pieces. Okay, now we want to solve this guy here. Okay, solve this guy here. Kali? Yep. So we're starting out with the white square here in that corner, right? Then we want to solve this. If there's a solution, right, if at the end of whatever we're doing here, the 14 and 15 are swapped over, where's the white square? In the same place. It's in the same place, exactly. So if there is a solution that corresponds to kind of a walk of this white square, which starts and ends there. All right. Okay. Now let's just go for a walk like this, okay? So let's go for a walk like this. And let's see, I'm going to use these. Uh, my little friend here, uh, my, my wife's actually a dentist, so I thought I'd give her a bit of a dentist theme here. So, you know, she'll like it better this way. Um, okay, so this is actually one of her toys in her office. Okay, so we, we chase this thing around now, round trip, okay? So let's just go one, two, three, four. One round trip. Another one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another round trip. And actually we could kind of go on forever here and do lots and lots of different round trips. And we could actually find that all these trips have something in common. Well, the number changes, but all the numbers we get are actually going to be even numbers, okay? So if there is a solution here, if there is a solution, it's going to consist of an even number of moves or an even number of swaps. Okay, now I'm actually not going to prove this. I'm going to assign this as homework for you. So, you know, you go and think about this and tell me in the comments, um, you know, an argument for why we always get an even number of steps in a, in a round trip like this, starting here, ending there. I'll give you a hint, okay, I'll give you a hint. Um, this is my hint. Okay, go for it and, you know, uh, see who is the first to, to, to come up with an argument. All right, now we just need one more ingredient and we're ready to kind of put it all together and, and kind of see at a glance that it's really not possible. Um, and that's something pretty deep in mathematics that hardly anybody knows about. It's a sort of incarnation of yin and yang in mathematics. So yin and yang comes up as like odd and even numbers. It comes up as right-handed, left-handed, but it also comes up in the mathematics of permutations, of shuffles, of messes. Um, so let's just go for it. So what I've done here, I've just taken the box, tossed out the tiles, and put them back in in random order, all right? Uh, okay, and now we're going to fix this using swaps, but we're not going to restrict ourselves to these special swaps involving the white square. Any swaps of two pieces are okay, okay? So let's just fix this one. It's actually very easy. You can fix any, any permutation, any mess, any, any shuffle of the pieces. Uh, if you don't restrict yourself to doing these special swaps. So, for example, the, the one has to go there, so what I do is swap those two guys, right? The two has to go there, then obviously I do this. Three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Um, so, then the last swap is just this empty tile and the 15, and we're done. And overall, it's taken us 13 swaps to do this, okay? 13 swaps. Pretty good. Now, we could try to do this again. Yeah, so same starting position. If we tried it again, um, you know, kind of really going wild and, you know, just put somebody in charge who doesn't know anything, 
maybe eventually they solve you know, the, the puzzle this way and they'll come up with a different number. That number will be also odd. Uh, in fact, whatever you try here, as, as long as you come up with a solution, it's always going to involve an odd number of, of switches. And so that's, that's the yin and yang of permutations. Any permutation whatsoever okay, of pieces, shuffle up, yeah, and you solve it with switches. Okay, you solve it with switches, um, then depending on the permutation, you always take an even number of switches to solve it, or you always take an odd number of switches to solve it. If it's an, always an even number, then we call the permutation an even permutation. If it's odd, we call it an odd permutation. Now, I'm not going to uh, prove this either. I've already done this, so I mean, check it out in that video there up in the corner. Um, it's actually a very nice video, if I may say so. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just use this, okay? So there's odd and even permutations. Um, let's just have a look at our, our real puzzle now, okay? Now, from before we know that if there is a solution, if there's a solution here, it's going to take an even number of swaps, which means well, for one of those things to have any chance of being solvable, it has to be an even permutation, right? An even permutation. Um, now let's have a look. Is this an even permutation? Well, obviously not, right? Because we can just fix it with one swap and one is odd. So that's an odd permutation. Done. Case solved. Now what about a Rubik's cube? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a Rubik's cube, okay? And here is a, you know, a regular position that can be solved with moves. Um, now, you could try and actually solve this also with, um, you know, what we just did, kind of yank out two pieces at a time, swap them over, and do this over and over again until the whole thing is restored. You can do this, right? And it turns out it will take you an even number of swaps. I mean, I haven't checked this, but I know it because every single legal configuration of a Rubik's Cube is an even permutation. It will take you an even number of this, you know, yanking out and swapping operations to fix any of them, right? So basically all legal configurations of a Rubik's Cube are even, even permutations. And then of course this one's not because you can fix it by just doing one swap, which is an odd one, okay? Okay, now we still want to solve it anyway. So we've just shown conclusively it can't be done, all right? <laughs> and now we're going to show that we can do it anyway. Um, actually, this, this whole thing is not by me or anybody. This actually came up uh, in 1880 during that craze. So one thing that happened was that uh, people actually started making these puzzle variations of the puzzles. So just to, to spice up things a little bit, they, for example, made them from round pieces like this. And they thought, well, that doesn't change anything about the puzzle, but actually it does. <laughs> so I just want to show you how that works. So I'm going to use one of those 1818 puzzles and using route pieces here, the 1415 is switched and we're now going to solve it. Okay? So this thing can actually be solved. The one with square pieces can't be solved. The one with round pieces can be solved. Why? Because you get an additional degree of freedom in here in your puzzle. You can move pieces in a strange way. So what we do is, we give the box a quarter twist, then we give all the pieces a twist, and then we solve. And I actually show this uh, like in front of your eyes. We'll just do it. So here we go. First draw is done. Second draw is done. And the third draw is done, and the fourth draw is done, just like that. So you can actually solve it this way. And there's another really nice solution, which goes like this. So again, 14, 15 switched. Uh, so what you can also do is, you notice that the six and the nine turn into each other when you turn them around. So you just turn them. And now you can actually solve the puzzle if you, if you start like this. And well, if you've got a box like this, try it. It's, it's real fun. Well, and that's basically it, right? That's basically it. Now, did uh, Dr. Pivet have to make his false teeth for the person who invented this method? I don't think so.